You're listening to Filmmakers Drinking Bourbon. Hey, what's up, Internet? It's Brandon. And it's Alex. And we're filmmakers. And we're also drinking bourbon. We are. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. All right, what do you got? All right. Mmm. Well, my friend. Ooh, nice. Ooh. Today. It's got a little bite. Our friends over at Buffalo Trace yep. has uh, sent us a uh, something to sample. It's their standard sure. Buffalo Trace Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And it's delicious. It actually is really good. Yeah, this is a, a staple. Yeah. So uh, <sighs> the cool thing about this show mm-hmm. is we get a chance to try all these new bourbons. We do. And old bourbons. Standard bourbons, go-to bourbons, small batch bourbons, bourbons that are in Kentucky, bourbons out of Kentucky. Mm-hmm. It's great. We've got plenty. It's amazing. <laughs> so uh, one of the things you need to know, let me uh, kind of give you a little bit of a uh, what this tastes like. And I'm not going to try to be an expert, so I'm going to read it. They've, they've already put in the work we don't put it on the bottom. We don't claim to be experts. No, we just, tell you, we just tell you if it's good or not. We just enjoy bourbon. That's so, all. Uh, if you want to know what it tastes like, it's probably... Um, it's probably something alcoholy. Like, is it alcohol? It's not alcoholy, <laughs> um, but it's probably something like this: the ancient paths of countless buffalo led America westward. Legendary explorers, pioneers, and settlers alike followed these trails, known as traces, through rugged wilderness to new lands, new adventures, and newfound freedom. And then Leonardo DiCaprio gutted the buffalo. And my friends, I want to tell you, Buffalo Trace tastes like newfound freedom. <laughs> so check it out. It's really yeah. good. We're just roaming the traces of Buffalo yeah, How would you describe it? It is caramelly. Yeah. I'd say that's a huge note. It's got like a, um, it's got a nice little like burn factor. Yeah. You know what I mean? Alcoholy. <laughs> It's good. If you, here's the thing, if you like bourbon, this is the yeah. type of bourbon you can pour on the rocks. That's what we're doing here for sure, and just enjoy it because it is a bourbon. It's not overly too sweet. It's not uh, too smoky. It's not too. It's just. It's just good. Yeah, there are definitely sweeter bourbons. Yeah. I would put Four Roses in the in the sweeter category. This is more. I don't, I wouldn't consider a bourbon savory, but it's just a good pour. Yeah, it's really good. So there you have it, people. We never claim to be experts, but what we do claim is to try wow. all sorts of different bourbons. If you've never heard of or never tried Buffalo Trace, we'll report back to you. We recommend that you go do so. Yeah, and thanks so much to the uh, our, our good friends at Buffalo Trace. We really mm. appreciate that. Yeah, Ninety proof, so yeah. it's not it's bad. A good time. So uh, not bad. You, what do you think about the setup here, buddy? It's a little different today. It's kind of weird, right? It's a little different. We're uh, it's voyeuristic. It's voyeuristic because there's that thing. This little guy. Right here with the blinking light yeah. that has never been here before. We're usually behind the camera. We are. Not in front of the camera. Yeah. And just the – so <laughs> we had a little hiccup in the beginning Yeah, because we're trying to get it all technically working and we weren't used to it. No. No. Yeah. So. But anyway, uh, so we had a listener, Levi, mm-hmm. uh, reached out to us and said – Hey, he, I had a proposal. Yeah. He said, hey, guys, he uh, I'm a fan of the show. Hmm. I've got some time on my hands. I'd love to help out. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, actually, let's try this thing. Let's try bringing this podcast visual to YouTube. What if we set up a GoPro, shot the show, yeah. and I sent you the raw footage? You think you could do something with it? So we have no clue what this is going to end up like, but we're going to trust one of our listeners knows what he's doing. For sure. And he's going to at least get this uploaded to YouTube and or make it better than it is right now. Exactly. I mean, we've had plenty of people, I know I have, come up to me and say, you guys run a video filmmaking podcast. <laughs> And there's no video aspect to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, but here's the thing, though. This It's a again, podcast. But here's the thing. Yeah. It's a podcast. It's and audio. And we set out to make this a thing where when you rap on set and you're driving two hours back yeah. home, you turn on you turn on an episode. You, you, we don't want you, you watching out. YouTube while you drive home. No. <laughs> don't, we want you listening yeah. to iTunes. That's sure. it. Yeah. So anyway. But we're going to try this. All I have to say. We're, see what we're excited. Yeah. Um, and I'll tell you what. The thing that I'm really stoked about today. What are you stoked about? Is NAB. We are on the verge. We're going. We are leaving Sunday. 
very shortly. We are yeah. flying out to Las Vegas, and as soon as we touch down, it begins. The festivities the begin. The first thing we got is Sunday night, we're going to Showstoppers. That's a big press event mm-hmm. where all the companies are there, all the camera companies, all the software companies, anybody is there. And we just make the rounds at their little networking party yeah. and find out the scoop before maybe they even announce it yeah. on make some Monday morning. And report back to you guys. We're going to be yeah. on Instagram and Twitter. All the new stuff that we see right away, Absolutely. boom, you get to see it. Yeah. If you follow us on at FDB Podcast on Instagram or Twitter, mm-hmm. you're going to get live tweets and live Instagram footage, photos, video, the whole deal, yeah. right from when it's happening. Yeah, you'll be the first to know. Me and Alex have set out, and we said, you know what? What we want to do in this trip is bring the listenership along for the ride. Yeah. So if you want in-depth camera reviews, there's 100 places out there that are going to be doing that. If you yeah. want breakdowns on how tutorials software works, and, if you yeah. want tutorials, there's some other place that's doing that. That's not us. If you want to go on a journey mm-hmm. with two filmmakers who are sipping on bourbon, navigating through the wonderful world that is NAB... Yeah. We're the podcast to listen to. No doubt. That's all we do, man. Cheers, bro. We're just here to uh yeah. we're here to enjoy and fill you guys in. So so it gets started on Sunday, we touch down, mm. we go right to the networking, right to the uh the press parties, all that sort of stuff. We're probably yeah. gonna have some sort of late night party. Probably and then Monday morning we are It is Las Vegas. Yeah. We're up early Monday morning uh-huh. and we get to get in early. We're going to Adobe is Be- the first stop. Because we have press passes, we get yeah. to get into exhibition hall. Early. Half, half hour early. Everyone else gets in at 10. We can go earlier. Yeah, we go at 930. We've gotten a, a press conference with Adobe. And you know what that means? Learn all the cool stuff. You know what that means? What up? It means that the FDB podcast listeners, guess guess what time they get to go to NAB? Let's see, 630 in the morning. They get to go early. <laughs> they get in. They get in with us. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be bringing that stuff to you right from the floor. If we can get you sneak peeks early with exclusives, we'll oh, do absolutely. that. So we're going to have a lot of fun. We've got a full day on Monday of talking to all sorts of people. We've got meetings scheduled with Adobe. We got meeting. You have a meeting scheduled with Black Magic, correct? Black Magic, yeah. You're going to be talking about some stuff going on there. Uh-huh. Um, Adobe's got some new releases on the software, especially Premiere. They got some upgrades on workflow. We're gonna be talking about. They got all sorts of stuff. We're gonna be, you know, rubbing elbows with the dudes that edited and colored Deadpool with visual effects gurus. You know, whole nine yards. Yeah, it's gonna be so. quite the fun journey. So I'm yeah. super excited. A couple things that I read recently. Uh, the 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 cool kids over at No Film School always are on top of the stuff. Mm. They got stuff. Um, but have you guys have have you seen this Lytro cinema yes. camera? It blows my mind. What is and it, this? It thing? also scares me half to death. Yeah, like y- yeah. you're out of a job. Obviously. Done. Yeah. No more uh, ACs. We Done. don't need focus pullers. There's no focus. You All just we need set is a up. data wrangler. Yeah. We need a, 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 a DAT. Well, the thing is, what did, it was like how many Ks? Like endless. It was a hundred and some megapixels. They're like of going. Capture. They're like beyond K's. So either way, for for anybody that hasn't seen it, Lytro, they had a still camera hey, a while back. They're measured in L's, man. They're measured in L's. Anyway, what they are is a light field capture camera, otherwise known as photons. Exactly. And I can't explain it on this podcast. Yeah, all I can beyond, tell you, it blows your mind. All I can tell you is that what you do is you snap a picture. This is the still version. You snap a picture. You import it into the software, the Lytro software. You can change the focus. You just touch. You can do whatever you want to do. You just tell whatever you want in focus. Yeah. And so the cinema version now, it looks like a giant sports broadcast camera, by the way. It's huge. Yeah. It looks like a- Like a photon- like a pinball machine. Laser blaster. It's a pinball like machine. Like my buddy would call it. Yeah. Anyway, so you set this thing up. You frame up your wide shot. You capture the entire thing in like hundreds of megapixels. Mm-hmm. Bring it back in. You can change focus, change framing, zoom in, zoom out, pan. Yeah, you can actually change perspective a little bit, I think. Yeah, you can do everything in post. Craziness. Look it up. Yeah. The Lytro Cinema Camera. We're going to be checking that out at it's NAB. Terrifying. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. The other thing I'm interested in, and a lot of people have been talking about this. We mm. talked about this with Rudy on the on the episode last week, is the VR world, VR experience. Everyone's talking VR. That's VR the next cameras, thing, dude. VR yeah. cameras, VR workflow, VR software. Yeah. Um, You're going to start seeing that implemented in the Facebook feeds. Here's the thing. You're going to be scrolling sure. with your Samsung VR or gear or whatever and just right. be in another world. Here's the question, though. Huh. Gimmick or not? I think everything's a gimmick. <laughs> gimmick or not? Yeah. Okay. I don't think it's around for our... Is it a sustainable method of filming? No. All right, so you're calling it now. I'm calling it now. Before the boom happens. Before it happens, Alex is on the no Director, 
of photography. Yeah. Alex Elkins. Yes. From Filmmakers Drinking Bourbon calls it now. VR will come and go. I I think it'll be like 3D. I think that with 3D, like you're saying, sure. 3D initially came out what in the 50s? Yeah, yeah. like forever ago. Came around and there's then just a new way to do it. It had it, now. A, it had a gimmicky moment yeah. with Avatar, which don't they have a new Avatar? Coming well, I'm out? talking back in the day, the the red and the blue. Sure, yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it had its day, went away. They brought it back because it got easier to do. And it got a little better. Got a little better. It was a little more interesting, but they still release. Yeah. Other, I mean, not every movie's filmed in 3D. Yeah, and I always choose the non-3D non So version. do I. It hurts my eye. Well, first of all, I wear glasses. Both of us, we yeah. wear glasses. You have to put another pair of glasses yeah, over your glasses. I don't want double glasses. No. So until they create screens or projectors that can do that natively, where you or, don't have to wear it. Or until they build lenses in everyday glasses that have the 3D built into it. You just click a switch or something. Or something, yeah. yeah. But either way, so with like 3D, that was big for a moment with Avatar, and then it dropped off the map mm-hmm. you know you have like little bits and pieces and things that are interesting it's like oh you got to see that in 3d yeah but with vr i'm here i've never used it uh, you probably have more experience than i they, do they released by the way side yeah. note they Go released ahead. a hannah montana experience in 3d that i went to with my daughter 3d or vr 3d okay yeah this was the, i mean hannah montana is old yeah. and she threw a guitar pick into the crowd and it and you caught came it came right by my head it was great it was the best day that of your life. Be- that was the epitome <laughs> of my 3D experience. That's awesome. So anyway, with <laughs> with VR, what I'm hearing from people that have used it is that after 20 minutes, your eyes are strained. You've got a headache. Yeah, it's I've, all these because so, you're focusing on a, a sure, lens like right in front of your sure. face. So I've we I'm a part of a, a network of of agencies and yeah. people. Uh, Leap, and they have a in the Louisville office. They have sort of a playground. Right, so this yeah. development, they have a lot of developers down there. They do apps and all sorts of stuff. They have a VR and interactive playground, and Sandbox. I've tried the Oculus yeah. and I've tried the Galaxy. The Oculus setup made me dizzy and want to throw up. Really? Um, How long I did was, it take? Before I was the... like five seconds. I was doing this like hang Jeez. glider experience. Whoa! Um, and then the Galaxy one, actually, I was fine. It didn't make me want to throw up, but. Mm. There's no like there was nothing about it that made me say oh I want to keep doing this like for an hour and a half yeah like no way it was definitely a gimmick it was a fun gimmick yeah I did a GoPro uh, VR experience where I looked to my right there was a surfer and then I looked to my left and I was in the barrel and mm-hmm. it was pretty cool but it was like a fleeting moment it wasn't like That's oh my I mean. gosh I wanted to, I want to do this all night I think some of the cool stuff like okay you're on a roller coaster ride for five minutes and then now they're starting to implement. Yeah. Go VR. on a real, a real roller coaster yeah. with VR. Boom, to, and you're yeah. like in an alien battle, and you're doing all. Sure. You're like on an F-16, but flying you're through the skies. Feeling the G forces, exactly. So that's kind of cool. But again, it only lasts for five minutes or a minute or however long the longest roller coaster is like five minutes. Gimmick. So, gimmick. I don't think you're going to start seeing. There are going to be people. Okay, they're going to be filmmakers. Like with every new device, sure. that film a movie. Yeah. In that thing, like yeah. you have this hardcore Experience Henry out yeah. now. Right. First person. First person. They're going to do that with VR, and you're going to be able to look and it'll around. it'll be cool. Yeah. For the first one. And they're going to combine it with, like, shaking chairs and stuff in the 4D realm, yeah. right? And you're going to be able to experience this battle or whatever. But not everybody's going to do it. They're going to do sure. it once or twice, and you're going to be like, yeah, that was cool, but it was a little much. Yeah. I want to go back to, you know, And I think, flat, too, is it 2D. me? Is it me, or is it the fact that we we go to movies to escape? Yeah. Well, and, full immersion, I guess, okay, is what just, they're going for. But what Go I'm ahead. saying is, is if one goes to a movie to escape from the real life, the real life is mm-hmm. 3D. The real life is 4D. They get they get sight, sound, touch, the whole deal. 27 d so, dude. Yeah. So to go to a theater and see something that is constrained to 2D is actually a new experience. Yeah, kind of. Right? Yeah, like, think I, about I, I get way. where you're going. I'm challenging the thinking here. I get where you're going. So maybe making it more real is actually less could be less appealing in the long run because it's like actually I want to get away from that. I'm, I deal with the real all day. Yeah, I think where they're going and the the plus for a lot of people is that you get to experience things that you normally wouldn't. Sure. So you can walk through prehistoric whatever and yeah, yeah, like yeah. ride a Got dinosaur it. if you want. Got it. But. Yeah. I think that's that's the benefit. Well, here's the thing. I I am in your camp at some level yeah. that I think it's a gimmick. 
Yeah. But you're never I, fully in my camp. <laughs> no. Ever. But I don't but I, here's the thing, I respect it and I'm a part of an industry and it's a business. Yeah. So I have to know it and I have to know how to do it if somebody wants to do it. I need to get behind it. Yes. I'm looking at it more from the narrative storytelling aspect. I think it will be a big thing. I think especially in therapy, medical applications, I think for like helping kids with autism and stuff like that, you know, providing a new way for them to experience things and for treatments. It'll be great. Yeah. But for narrative filmmaking, I don't think it's going to sure. be a, a big And deal. it's going to revolutionize porn. It already has. So it really comes yeah. down to porn and helping yeah. kids. <laughs> kids and porn. That's what VR is about. That's the both sides. Yeah, both sides of the spectrum right there. <laughs> Good Lord. As long as uh, you put an and between and. the two, you're safe. Yeah, not ne- Don't nothing. ever put them next to each other. Mm-hmm. You get arrested for that. You get arrested for that. That's a subway situation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Oh, man. We're going down a rabbit hole. It's dangerous right now. Yeah, we got to get out of this that. This Buffalo Trace, Here, I'm going to throw you a line. All right. We're going to climb back All out right, of that sorry. rabbit hole. Okay. Boom. We're done. So anyway, enough about VR. Enough about NAB. We're super stoked. We Follow are. us on at FDB Podcast. Twitter. On Instagram, Instagram and Twitter. Yeah. And every day, uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we'll be posting an episode from NAB. We will. Right Full there, episode. Giving you the experience, our experience mm-hmm. we're sharing with you. And what it'll be is us talking to people on the floor, us talking to the vendors at the booth, yeah. learning about the new equipment. Speaking and of then which. Oh, bre- I was going to say, and then breakdowns, you know, we're going to go back to the hotel room, kind of yeah. regroup, maybe do a little bit of a breakdown and go a little more in depth. Yeah. So. And we've uh, we've stepped our game up a little bit for all the people at NAB. We're going to be passing out these fun little stickers. You want to throw yeah. that up to the uh, camera? There? Check this out. We got some swag. Boom. Hopefully you're going to see stickers posted all over America. Everyone from Whoa. NAB is going to go back to their town and start bombing their city with yeah. FDB stickers. Give me that thing. Then in addition to connect with vendors to make sure that we have great guests on the show from Adobe to mm-hmm. Canon to whoever's coming out next. We're going to partner with them. We're going to reach out to them. We got a little little fact sheet so we can get them to, to come on the show. It tells everything that you have to know yeah. about us. So that's kind of cool. So we designed that. Those were all designed by uh, Kyle Ebersol, lead designer at LeapFrame. He's a fan of the show and a friend of the show. So, yeah. And then lastly, we felt like we needed to step our game up. So we're going to be running around on the floor with like Zooms and uh, Tascam recorders. Yeah. and we got we, spiral little we've XLRs. Got, the, we've got our yeah. kit built to be pretty nimble. We're going to be using uh, SM57s or 58s just because. You know all that stuff. I know nothing about yeah, that. Yeah, we can yeah. get right up in your, in your face and l- eliminate noise from uh, the interviewers. But we thought, you know what? Any good news organization has a, has a mic flag. They got flags, man. They're branding so all we, over their we stuff. So we got some built. These are going to go on the uh, the SM fifty seven and so solid. Let people see. We got a nice little mic flag there. Pretty awesome. Yep. So uh, maybe we can use it for a bourbon flag. <laughs> yeah, put it on yeah, the bourbon let's, bottle. Let's get another pour here, and then we'll we'll see if it's on go the bourbon bottle. It. By the way, uh, for anybody that was wondering, I mean, you've seen photos and stuff. This is the piece that Grainwell did for us. This was all like handcrafted and reclaimed wood and right? Yeah, we did a a, a job for um a small boutique company here in uh Cincinnati and um Boom. <laughs> nice. It's a bourbon topper. There you go. Uh and what we did it was we did some cool branded content for them and out of the kindness of their hearts they said, Hey, we can make you guys something cool and we said, How about if you made us a wonderful uh, filmmakers drinking bourbon sign? Mm-hmm. Uh and they were like, Yeah, we can make it out of the out the of lid of a bourbon, bourbon barrel. barrel. Yeah, it's Fantastic. So, so cheers to that. Yeah. Great stuff. Cheers so to what about you, man? That's what I was excited about. What are you Well, I'm gonna be along with you on that well, journey, buddy. Sure. But I mean yeah, what I'm, else is I'm going on? I'm pretty stoked about what that. What else is going on in your life? You got a, you got an injury. I got an injury. You, you okay? Yeah, I got okay. I'm okay. I uh it's hard to turn my head to the right <laughs> right now. Uh so I went to the gym on Tuesday, worked out pretty hard. You can't tell, but I'm getting in better shape. Sure. Um worked out pretty hard, went to sleep. Woke up two days later, and just the way I turned, yeah, because it had been so long, tweaked something in my back. Yeah, yeah, and I was in excruciating pain let's, all day yesterday. Let's delve into this. Let's delve into this world of the DP workout because I assume <laughs> I assume DPs really that's something you should do. I mean, mm. cameras over your shoulder, sixty pound cameras. Like, dep- what do you do to kind of really condition yourself for a long shoot with like a big rig? Well, I I will. Start that off with saying it depends on what level you're at. If you're like 
big dog DP. You're not even sure. touching a camera, right. really. Okay, you've got so, your hey, camera operator. Soderbergh stuff. touches the camera. He does. He's also the director, the editor, the writer, the producer, yeah. the you know whatever. He's he's the does all. Um, but yeah, it just depends. If you're a one man band kind of a dude, and you're yeah. lugging around a big rig with whatever, maybe you're doing steady cam, maybe it's all handheld. Who knows? It's taxing for yeah. sure. It'll wear you up. I think your legs, your lower back, and your shoulders. I mean, I think those are the big things that you get. So, so that you got like a regiment you do. Not like specifically for <laughs> for camera operation. <laughs> you got I like mean, a over the shoulder yeah. type of deal. Right. Boom. Now we take the Alexa and we put it up and we put it down and it's we like, put it uh, up. Yeah. Camera CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> camera fit. Yeah. Camera fit. Yeah. Nice. You could we could do we could start that. that we could. Be could. A thing. Yeah. Nice. Done. All right. So you're feeling better. Nobody take that because we're you're gonna make better. a million so, dollars off of it. Anyway, no, but so I just work out in general. Sure. I was I was a swimmer for the longest time. I swam in college. Lifeguard. I was a surf rescue guard, <laughs> which you give me crap about all the time. Yeah, you always there's, yeah. it always comes in handy. Yeah, man, I'm just saving people's lives nice. all day long. You know? Awesome. Hey, when we're on shoots and you fall into a pool, done. You feel safe because I'm there. You're there. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you're feeling better, but I'm, feeling I'm assuming that you're you had to rest up a little. Did you take it easy at home? Dude, all day yesterday and this morning was alternating hot packs and. Cold packs, mostly cold packs. Yeah. Advil, uh, stretching lightly. I did an Epsom salt bath to Man. like get the magnesium flowing. Yeah. Uh, I take MSM, <laughs> like this sulfur supplement sure. in water three times a day. You know, intense. it's all greens and veggies. Yeah. Trying to clear everything out and all the lactic acid. Nice. And when you were, as you were resting and sort of conditioning, did you watch anything cool? Oh yes, or were you dude! Just chilling? Oh my god, no. We uh, I watched a lot of stuff, but what was awesome was we discovered that last night um, there was actually two new episodes. We so we watched the first two episodes of The Path. Oh, Hulu's new original. Hulu's new original with, with Aaron uh, Paul. Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. Yeah. Uh, we didn't like. We completely forgot about. It. We watched two episodes that were out, and then we like went on to other things. Last night we were like, well, let's check and see if there's a new one out. There yeah. were two out. Yeah. Episode three and four. We just watched episode three, but it is. Dun, 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 hey, let's dun, take this call real quick. Dun, dun, this is my friend Brownie. Hey, what's up, Brownie? It's Brandon. You are on live with Filmmakers Drinking Bourbon. What's up, buddy? How are you doing, Brandon? <laughs> doing good. Hey, I forgot to turn my phone off. Uh, I know we need to talk about that project. I do want to give you an update. You're part of the show now. Yeah, you're part of the show. I do want to give you an update. Um, the client was real happy with the copy. Um, we got a couple adjustments, but I'll have to talk to you later because I'm recording a podcast right now. Yeah, okay. That, that, would, uh, that makes sense. All right. Thanks, <laughs> All See right, you, man. Brownie. See you, buddy. Uh, All right. right that funny. was uh, Mike Brown, a.k.a. Brownie. He is a uh, creative director and copy um, mm -hmm. Copy extraordinaire for Leap Agency, and like me, he loves fitness and eating healthy. Yeah, he's a CrossFit he's a guy. He's a CrossFitter, CrossFit guy. And yeah. uh, but anyway, we're working on a project, and uh, he wrote the copy, and it's beautiful. Nice. Yeah, he loves bourbon too. Can't wait to read that. Yeah. So anyway, where were we before that happened? Um, Do you guys like my ringtone? Yeah. You know what that was? But no, I have no idea. You know what that was, Bart? You know what that was? No. Bart's in the booth. He's he's feeling it. He's like, ah, it sounds familiar. That was. That was Curtis Mayfield, Move On Up. Ah. Move On Up! Nice. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. From the Superfly soundtrack. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. You can't go wrong with that. Because you're a Superfly. You got this. Anyway, <laughs> where anyway, were we? We're talking about The Path with Aaron Paul oh, yeah. on Hulu. Yeah, we, we've been watching it too. It's great. What episode are you on? We're, we just finished four. You just finished four. Ah, so you watched, because I talked to you last night and you just started three. I, I was all in. You I watched had to, two in yeah, a row. I had to go two in a row. Dude, it's so good. It's it about, yeah, like a, a cult, basically. Yeah, let's get the listeners up. If you're not in, if you have not jumped in on this series You yet, have to. Here's, here's, the, here's the long and short. Yep. Basically, it's the story of Scientology. Kind of. With a little bit of Christianity thrown There's in. some stuff mixed in. Yeah. The main bad guy is based off of the David Miscavige character. The He's main, not even really that bad. The main guru is based off of L. Ron Hubbard. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, from my perspective, pretty clear. I know a little bit about Scientology, yeah. but it's pretty clear. And then, but they weave in these other themes that are more Christian, like the garden and the light. Those are a little more Christian associated. Yes. But the the 
So the cult is called Meyerism, or they, if you're in the cult, they call it the movement. Yep. Um, they the have book what's is called based on the ladder. Yeah, yeah, it's called the ladder, where you climb the ladder to the different rungs. quote levels, which is just like yeah. Scientology. Which I just got that during episode three. Yeah. Their level. No, 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 not. They were like, yeah, this is only for R eight or R seven. Yeah. Oh, yes. rung seven, rung yes. eight. I get it. Yes. Okay. Uh-huh. Just like yeah. Scientology. Exactly. Yeah. But either way, so it's about a family. It's about Aaron Paul. Yeah. So Aaron Paul's the main character who is kind of in, kind of out. Well, he marries in. Yeah. He was a wayward soul. Yeah. He got saved. He was lost. His his uh, I won't give it away, but there was something in his life that was significant. We don't know yet. And he met his wife, who was a born into Meyerism, aka potentially Scientology yeah. or allegedly. And she's a Meyerist um, legend. She's a Meyer, family, yeah, and kind of she, royalty, a founding family, founding, yeah. And he marries in, and he becomes, he goes all in. So his wife's at like a level eight or an R eight rung. Mm-hmm. He's an R six. Yep. So it's interesting. Yeah, there's so there's some things he's not allowed to know. There's and here's the thing: and, areas he's not yeah. permitted to visit. Kind and, of deal. And and I don't think this gives it away. No, but early yeah, on, be safe. Early on, he he comes across some information, and and now he's faced with doubt. the reality of his life. Just doubt, doubt. Yeah, and boom, the show propels. It's great. Any smart person in in an organization like that. You know, there's always some doubt. Some, am I on the right path? Yeah, is this real? Hence the path. But yeah, yeah. So it's really it's, interesting. Dude. It's great. I like it a lot. Um, one of the other shows that I've been watching yeah. is um, just finished season two, Togetherness on HBO. I haven't started it yet. God, I love hear, it. I hear fantastic love it. Things. Sad moment because they discontinued the show. Really? Yeah. Why? They, it was not, doing well. Yeah, it's not going to re up. Uh, HBO did not re-up, and according to uh, Duplass, he said that they're fine with it, and it was a beautiful ride, and huh. let it, let it, it is what it is. I wonder why. And he said, uh, they, the Duplass brothers in an article said, treat it like a really awesome miniseries. Yeah. And it, I'll tell you what, season two is phenomenal. Did they wrap it up pretty well? <sighs> so good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, it ended well as a season. You could easily pick up and go for another. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Deep down in my heart, I hope like maybe Hulu or Netflix like reaches out and brings Re- it back. Start it, yeah. It's just great. I love the writing. I love how it's just very human, very real. So for me, I, I haven't started it. Give me a, a breakdown, a short, quick so synopsis. Very simple. What that's so togetherness is Duplass, uh, his character and his wife. They've been married for a while. They have two kids. He's a sound designer in L.A. She's a stay-at-home mom. Mm. Uh, his best buddy's trying to make it as an actor, but he's kind of a deadbeat. And her sister is kind of a deadbeat. She she's really pretty, and never ha- she's always relied on that. And now she's at a point in her life where she doesn't quote have a man, mm. and she's kind of wandering. And it's this great moment where you've got these two wayfinders on the outskirts that they're kind of forming a friendship. The sister and uh, the main guy's best friend, um, but it's kind of this funny sort of like you know give and go, sort of an unlikely love story sort of thing that's budding. Hmm. Um, but it's really fun the way they, they kind of, that relationship develops. And then the husband and wife are at a crossroads where, you know, their marriage is becoming a little stale. They've been married for a while now, and the the wife is really looking for purpose. She's just been a stay-at-home mom. And so it's just a real, realistic storyline. Cool. But this the way it plays out is just really good. It's great drama. It's funny. And it really touches the heartstrings and makes you, you know, sort of think about your own relationships. So nice. It's great. I love it. Yeah, that's awesome. But that's, that's awesome. the type of, that's the type of film and movies I, I like. Yeah. Did you, um, oh, what's Transparent? Do you watch Transparent? No, you said it was great. I haven't okay. gotten in yet. That's another one. So along the same lines of the, you know, family drama, looking at relationships, mm-hmm. real life, comedic yeah. situations. That reminds me of that. Yeah. I just think that there's something beautiful in cinema when, when we show the warts and we look at it in a new way and we don't take ourselves so seriously Mm -hmm. and we kind of, you know, it, I like it when cinema challenges us to think about our own lives and to, to somehow like be better or to, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, not necessarily better. Well, I'm not that altruistic, but somehow no. it, it makes you reflect upon it challenges who you things. Are. Yeah, I mean, it takes some balls to, to make a, a series or a movie sure. like that. It's so safe. To just make a superhero superhero yeah, movie, superhero seriously, movie. yeah, or you know something action packed or whatever, yeah. where you yeah. don't actually confront real life 
right. issues. But when you have something yeah. that's like, eh, is this really moral? Is this blah, blah, blah? Yeah. It's cool. It takes some so, guts. But I, I love yeah. it. Um, the other thing we've been watching, I don't know, and this is more in the goofy realm, is my wife likes New Girl. And it's actually funny. Like I've, I, yeah, I, that's I, what you're saying. I enjoy watching it, but the the dialogue is just – it's all one-liners. And yeah. it's not how people talk in real life. It's very much like – Bada bing, bada boom, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. It's like I got a kinda... few buddies that love. It. I we watched two episodes of it and I couldn't stand yeah. it. I did notice though, production wise, this is kind of funny. Yeah. Whenever they're inside, uh, they move the they pop the gla- the lenses out of her glasses. Really? When they're outside, they leave them in. What? It's weird. So that there's no reflections. Well, I guess I don't know. Obviously, because it's natural light or whatever. But they um. Yeah, when, that's what I mean. So they can't see the reflections yeah, of the she, yes. lighting units in the ceiling yes, when, when she's, she's like, <laughs> yes, when she's outside, whatever. Yeah, when she's outside, no lenses. Inside, usually at Nick's bar, if you watch the show, uh, all everyone in the show, if anyone who has glasses, the lenses are popped out. You mean yeah? So outside, there are lenses. You yes. said the opposite. Okay, yeah, cool. So which is funny because like you know people who aren't in the industry just don't catch it or think yeah. about it. It's so that's funny. funny. My wife was like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "They popped them out, so there's no reflections, or they don't. You don't see the lights on set." Weird. And she was like, oh, my gosh, the lenses are gone. That's crazy. <laughs> huh. I'll have to, yeah, that's that's really funny. Yeah, I'm guessing yeah. it's a reflection thing. I would assume, yeah. Yeah. Weird. So any, anything else what you're about, watching? Uh, I was going to say, did you, have you been to the theater? You probably, you haven't been in the theater recently, have you? No, man, I've been, I've been behind. Yeah. I've been behind, you know, with the, I still got to catch up on a bunch of the Oscars. There, I haven't yeah. seen The Room. I haven't seen Spotlight. I haven't. There's a lot of them. There are a few I haven't seen either. We, so it's uh, tough to keep up, man. It is. Those are all out of theaters now, though. I mean, you got to go. I know, go. but I'm just saying in general, just finding yeah. the time to put in the work. Is oh, hard. no, I know. We, um, so recently we saw, did we talk about Batman Superman? Uh, we didn't, but okay. I, I mean, we don't need to at all. <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't. So we I'm saw, sure it was Awful. Yeah, for you it would be. I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the one guy, the one percent. Yeah. There. I. Hey, the, you either loved it or you hated it. <laughs> I saw the video of Ben huh. depressed. The YouTube. That's spin. funny. Yeah, it's really where he just zooms in on him. <laughs> uh, yeah. He. Uh, what's cool is that he's now confirmed directing, writing, and starring in his own standalone Batman film. Really? Yeah. So that that's been confirmed. Mm. That but yeah, like a horrible Batman idea. versus Superman was enjoyable. I thought there's yeah. lots of dream sequences, super Here's dark. The, thing. the only superhero, in my opinion, that would have been awesome hmm. is if Aronofsky would have done Batman. He was signed on for it. I know. And he backed well, no, out because he, he was like... He wasn't signed on for Batman. He, yeah, he was, was signed on for the Wolverine. Either way. Does it matter? They're all the same. It's kind of different. Saying, all I'm yeah. saying is, is you let Aronofsky have it, it's probably going to be better. For sure. And I was excited about that. But he was signed on for Wolverine and instead did Noah. Sure. So he went with superhero to religious film, which yeah. is kind of weird. Which, but it, it aligns with his yeah. viewpoints and his, like, exp- you know, experiential yeah, yeah. whatever. Um, but either way, no, recently, most recently, we went and saw 10 Cloverfield Lane. Was that good? It's fantastic. <laughs> is that J.J. Abrams? Uh, yeah. All right. He produced it. He didn't direct it. Um, it's amazing dude it's so is that john goodman good yes is he awesome john goodman basically the story of it is he runs or he built a survival bunker out on his farm okay for like the apocalypse or whatever yeah so it goes down like an event happens whatever it goes down or, or it you think it goes down no it Something happens. Okay. I mean, or I mean, it may or may not. Because it seemed like in the trailer, like from what I heard about it, is this idea that like he's telling these people don't go out there, and they're questioning like, did anything even happen? Exactly. So that's a huge part of it. So what I'm asking is, I can't tell you anything. Did anything happen, or is it? I can't tell you. Why would you even ask that? What's wrong (laughs) with you? Do you want to ruin it for Uh, yourself and everybody? Oh jeez. So either way, uh, a girl finds herself in this survival bunker with John Goodman. And go see the movie. All That's right. all I can say. All right, cool, <laughs> cool. dude. We're yeah. we're getting we're getting down and dirty on movie talk today. We should be. What are you watching? We're getting in it. Yeah, this is nice. I know. Well, I've been watching a lot because yeah. my freaking neck injury. Sure. But, well, and know. here's the thing. I wanna I wanna let people know. Um, we really want to hear from you guys, and we want to know what you're watching. What was really cool. One of the things that uh, that we're doing. We I think we mentioned. Last episode is we're going to be at NAB. We're going to be throwing. Are a, we? Are we going to that? Shut up. Huh. We're going to be throwing a meetup. Yeah, we are Tuesday. At, at this point, there's 150 <clears throat> people coming, which blows my mind. 
There's 150 filmmakers. Why would even 150 people I listen to us? <laughs> this is great. But they're coming. They're going to come hang out. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. And it's at the Artisan. Yeah. It's right the, off the strip. Absolutely. Tuesday at 9. So one of the things I did, and this is- You should come. This is pretty cool. Uh, one of the things I did was I said- um, I have all these people's email addresses, right? Yeah. Because they're signed up on our Eventbrite ticket. So I, I've been emailing them. So if you're coming to the meetup, you're a part of an exclusive community right now. And so I emailed them. I said, hey, you know, we're going to be hanging out. I'd love to know what you guys are watching, what you're working on. And what you're drinking. And what you're, and, well, and what you're, uh, <laughs> what you're what excited, you're excited about. about. Yeah. So I had, we had some cool responses. Really? Yeah. So uh, People actually got back to us? Yeah, this is awesome. So, uh, okay. so here's the thing that's pretty cool. Um, we... Um, we are, let's see here, let me find these people. Um, at this point, we are, we've got some cool responses. 150, I can't believe that. Yeah. that so here's a guy, uh, Tom Wineland. Tom Wineland. Hey, Alex and Brandon, here from Sky City Hayat Team, which is a, a Kickstarter film. Sweet. Looking forward to the meetup. Um, he says he loves watching vinyl on HBO, which looks oh, good. I haven't started it yet. Yeah. Uh, and Brad he, Galloway, by the way, is super into that. I know, so I want to watch it. Uh, so he loves watching vinyl. He's currently working on Sky City Haya, a TV show project, mm. and he's excited about getting Sky City Haya made into a reality show, or in, or sorry, made into a reality, like bringing it to life. Sky City. I checked it out. Yeah. I tweeted it. I retweeted the link. Uh-huh. It's actually pretty awesome. I'm not a big sci-fi fa- fan, but these guys on a small budget through Kickstarter have put together like a respectable attempt. Like it looks great. Nice. So check it out, Sky City. Hi, yeah. That's what he's working but on. You said so a reality show? No, 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 no. You Sci-fi. Said, okay. I said he wants to bring it to a reality. Got it. Not a yeah. reality show. Gotcha. So the other guy I had that's Caleb. The, that's the Buffalo Trace. I had uh, Caleb. Uh, <laughs> Caleb Wojak. He he says, um, "Hey guys, what's up?" He says, "I'm what I'm going to be rewatching Mr. Robot season Which one. I haven't seen either because it's amazing. Yeah, that's right here. Uh, but currently he's watching Outlander with his wife. Uh. Uh, what's he working on? He's working on his project that's similar to ours the diy video guy which is a podcast Ooh, so if you're sweet. into it if you want to know some diy stuff yeah. check him out he's in the itunes store that's diy cool. video guy check his podcast out no so doubt. he's going to be at the meetup so we got some cool people at the meetup and what he's excited about is meeting all the cool filmmakers at nab um cool it's just cool to see all these people coming together and kind of you know reaching out mm-hmm. so we had another guy kyle hufford he's from i think indiana yeah. Um, he says he's watching Vinyl and House of Cards. So that's two for Vinyl. Boom. Sounds like we need to watch this. Yeah. So um, I hear it, dude. He's currently working on um, mostly commercial projects, also starting research for a marine biology documentary Ooh. that we will be shooting next spring. It's up my alley. It's up your alley. <laughs> You're a former lifeguard yeah. and a former aspiring marine biologist. Exactly. Did two years of marine biology. Um, and in school, did not actually <laughs> practicing. He says uh, he went philosophical with what he's excited about. Yeah, he says I'm excited about the democratization of filmmaking. Oh. There's a good and bad to this, but I think much more good than bad. The more stories that people uh, are telling and participating in, the better. Huh. So that's the kind. Of, this I is might the, have to challenge him on that. This is yeah. the kind of community that we're building. Yeah. We're building a group of filmmakers who are having these conversations. We're going to be having this conversation with 150 people in Vegas. It's literally going to be 150 filmmakers drinking bourbon, like actual bourbon, actual filmmakers, 150. It's going to be awesome. And I'm going to throw, I'm excited. I'm going to throw something out. Go ahead. I feel, I feel like something's happening in this community. Really? I feel like out of this meetup may launch – a filmmakers drinking bourbon online community, a place like a where forum, a place where you can connect, yeah, a place where you can share ideas, a place where you, you could, crew up one of your own projects, you could potentially, up, a place where you could post a rough cut to your reel and get honest feedback, honest critique, a place where yeah. you could post up one of your rough cuts to a project and get good feedback, good critique, yeah. with good positive reinforcement from people who care who want to do great work. Exactly. This is like when we I'm were, not saying it's going to happen, but it might. It might. When we started this podcast, you you said one of your biggest hopes and dreams is that one day our community would grow large enough that you could tweet something out and be like, "Hey, this is a really great project. Yeah. They just started a Kickstarter. Let's see if we can help get these guys get it made." And then it boom, it would be funded. Yeah. 
that was one of your biggest hopes and dreams. So that could. Yeah. I so mean, here's the thing. Could develop we're, to that we're, point. We're going to look into it. Um, there are some great tools out there, like Slack is one of them. Yeah. And I know that the motion design community. So like slack line where you like balance on the thing between trees? Kind of. Right? Motion design, the motion design community already has this. They have a group, a motion designer group that's literally some of the best of the best in the world. And they all connect online. They're sharing ideas and they're, yeah. And some of these guys are like, hey, how did you do that? And they'll respond and they'll be like, hey, here's how I, here's how I achieved that look, you know, with motion design. We can, why can't we have that? We can. I feel like so often filmmakers are divisive. You know, it's like you know, other directors compete against other directors. And, yeah. you know, I want a world where I'm friends with Brad Galloway, where he edits my film. Yeah, because right now you guys are mortal enemies. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Brad's mortal enemies. But I think that's a special place when yeah. if we can create a community amongst the filmmakers. 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 <laughs> Filmmakers, filmmakers are very different than filmmakers. Filmmakers drinking bourbon. Yeah. Uh, but if we can create that kind of community that's positive, reinforcing, yeah. where you, your network now becomes much bigger. What if you need a B-roll shot in L.A. or you need a B-roll shot in Wichita? You go to Dissolve. Who are you going to call? <laughs> Who are you going to call? You know what? Ghostbusters. There could be a world where you know all you have to do is go to the filmmakers drinking bourbon community. Bourbon. Bourbon. <laughs> community. <laughs> And you can put out there and say, "Hey guys, I need a B-roll shot from the from the the, the Great Plains." Exactly. And someone else says, "No problem. What camera are you shooting on?" Yeah. Done. They'll Boom. match it because you trust it. It's a trusted community. It's all yeah. verified. Whatever. Yeah. It could get to that point. Wow. This I'm is not exciting. Saying it will. I, I don't Your know. mind just like went to a different well, area. I'm you're, sorry. You I'm just. I'm, plant, I'm planting seeds. You are. I'm planting seeds. Hey. I think after watching the path, I feel this call to. Share the light. Yeah, you're gonna start a cult and start <laughs> abducting people Wait, from like Hurricane Katrina. Start a cult. Is it issues? FDB already a cult? It kind of is. <laughs> yeah, we've got our serum, <laughs> our secret sauce, <laughs> our secret sauce. <laughs> oh geez. Oh, Anyways. we bow before our idol. <laughs> so what do you? What do you? Uh, what are you working on, man? What's in the uh, hopper right now? For you? I'm cool? working on getting this kink out of my neck um, and loosening up with some Buffalo nice. Trace. Uh, no, what I'm working on is, so I've got three short films that are almost done. I think we've talked about all of them exhaustively that no one wants to hear any more about any of those. Uh, one thing I'm working on is with Brad. So going back and forth with him, as are you. Yeah. Is getting Kill Game done. Yeah. We've, you guys heard us talk about it. We shot it and then you're like, what happened to it? Well, we got it posted, Being and post. it's it's really close. We handed it off yeah. to get across the finish line and have a new, fresh set of eyes. We handed it off to our friend Brad Galloway, Brad who Galloway. Uh, has been on the show, and he's taken it across the finish yep. line from an edit. At that point, we will do sound design um, and or score. I and think, color. hopefully, first choice is going to be Adam and the team <laughs> yeah. at uh, Sound Images. See what their if workloads like. If they can't like. get to it, then we'll have to expand, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, and then we'll get color, and then we're ready to we're ready to print this bad boy. We are so yeah, awesome. So working on getting that done. Uh, and then I've got two other ones. I've got a, a Wright State student film that's right. done. Basically, it's it's done. Sure, premiering on May first at this festival in Dayton, and then that's out to other festivals. Uh, pretty exciting. It's a sci fi film, which awesome. are not typically your favorites. But I, no, I like sci fi. I don't like superhero. Yeah. I like I like Primer. I liked uh, yeah, and this Ex is Machina. like real world sci-fi, like yeah, not I'm, I'm create okay not like sci-fi. laser blasters and alien reptoids or whatever, but sure. you know real life like Ex Machina. Yeah. So that's cool. And then I've got um, lapses with Adam Mark Brown, who I did Daniel and Siri with. That's almost done. I think the drive sitting in my uh, mailbox. It sh- I think it shipped in yesterday this morning. Uh, so I got to get that off to color. Get that done. Scores getting done. That's yeah. off the festival. So I'm gonna awesome. have three going out at the same time, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Well, other than that, it's uh, that's the th- you know what? that's the thing I I love and admire about you, buddy. What? You are you are one of the hardest working men in this industry. I don't know about that. You never rest, and you're Ever. always working with commercial stuff. But in addition to that, above and beyond, you push yourself yeah. to do narrative stuff and all those sorts of things. Yeah, because that's where I want to be. So I, I, I think that's a, a thing that we can throw out there is, you know, you got to work towards, you got to be working in the industry that you eventually want to work in. So yeah. you may not be able to do it on the full scale that you want to do it at. Say you want to be the best music video director that there ever was. You need to make a music video. You need to start. You need to start. Yeah. Start with a local group, yeah. a local friend, a band, a guy that plays guitar that you just happen to know. Sure. 
just start shooting stuff, you know? So that's what I'm doing. Cool, man. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, just working on getting those done. And then the other thing is, is working on, uh, client connections, expanding my network. Awesome. So just, uh, doing the whole, you know, social deal and the SEO, hustle. the hustle, the DP hustle, the my DP friend. DP hustle. Nice. Just getting it going. That's a shout out again to, yeah. um, Rudy. cinematography database, dude. That's another, I just, I love that podcast. Yeah. It's good. People need to check that out. So he does Get a thing it. called DP Hustle. Do it. Yeah. Good awesome. episode. It's great, man. Anyway, what have you been working on? Uh, pre-production. We're in script writing mode for a, a national broadcast campaign for a university. Yep. Um, and we we just we just went through over the scripts today and got a pretty good response. Really? So we're doing some tweaking. I, I tweeted this this morning, man. I don't know if you if you caught this. Um, I did, and did I, want, I, want, I wanted to ask you about yeah. that. And I wanted. To, oh, it's great. I love yeah. It. So anyway, this morning I just kind of, as I was working, we were getting ready to pitch this thing. I tweeted this out, and this really is what I, I love. I tweeted out um, that moment before you present your ideas. Dot 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 is why I'm a filmmaker. Yeah, and man, it's just there's something in that moment where it's your adrenaline it, builds well, up. Well, it's and... adrenaline, but you're also you're vulnerable, but you're excited. You vulnerable? Yeah, man, because you got this idea oh. and you think it's great and you believe in it mm-hmm. and you're getting ready to put it out there for someone to react to. And hope it doesn't get ripped and to hope shreds. it doesn't bomb. Yeah. Which, you know, sometimes those things happen. And, and uh, and so it's exhilarating, and and then when you throw it out there and you get this response that's very carnal and you know human and just sort of like the you see somebody's gut react mm-hmm. to it, it's great, man. I like it. So I'm assuming it went well. Yeah, I mean, it, it's again, you know, in this industry, I mean, well is subjective. I well, mean, my question is, yeah, we, we've got to work. I mean, this is an industry where you work hard. So people come back. There's certain things they need your script to do. Yeah, and so there was definitely some things that this script was missing, and we got to go back and work hard. But overall, no it was a good response. Great. My question is, would you have still tweeted that exact same thing had the response been overwhelmingly negative? I tweeted it before the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Because to me, the the thing that I love is the moment before it happens. Yeah. It's so like you don't this, know the it's like the, this, the unknown, the yeah. journey into the the it's forest. It's the Eminem you know. eight mile moment. You got to move yourself. The music, let them know. It's like yeah. bum, and then mom spaghetti, bum, mom bum, spaghetti, bum, yeah, bum, 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 <laughs> and you're like you're ready to fight. It's great. Yeah. So yeah. Cool. But it, it is. It's fun. And I, I love that part of the industry. I hope I hope you guys out there who know what I'm talking about. Um, you know, I hope you the ones who get it. I think you know what I'm talking about. It's yeah. a beautiful sort of moment. It's also kind of the moment before you step on set. Yeah, that's fun like, too. To me, yeah. it's like... Yeah, the night before shooting is always, oh, it's crazy. You, you and I have talked about this. I never sleep. I can't sleep. Yeah, either. I can't sleep. No matter how much I've prepared. Are you wearing your lucky shirt today? Which one? Is that the one you always wear? Your superstitious shirt? No, that one got uh, destroyed. You got your superstitious shoes on, though. My wife right? threw that shirt away. Oh, man. Because it had... <laughs> Why would she like, do that? Holes in the armpits, and it was just like... It was falling apart, dude. Why would she do that? Because uh, I didn't need it anywhere. And she got me a new one. So she got me this one. I like it. But the red flannel, yeah, and the black. Yeah. The black Nikes, um, that's that's my go-to. Yeah. Just makes me feel good. And then you do separate socks, right? It just depends on how. Depends how, on how you're feeling. How I'm feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? <laughs> Break down what my... episode was that where you revealed your vulnerabilities and your superstitions? I don't know. It was like a personal therapy moment you had. kind of was. On air. Yeah. And I <laughs> talked about if, I, if I'm feeling really uncertain about yeah. a thing, I'll just wear two different socks to... Bounce out my chi or whatever. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. What was I going to say? I was going to say something. I, I and you, you. you sidetracked me with wardrobe <laughs> talk, which makes no sense. I don't know, dude. I'm just excited about NAB. We're going to get yeah. into so much cool stuff. We're going to be talking to all the best gear manufacturers. Uh, there's a bunch of big wigs going. Yeah. You have people like Philip Bloom and all those guys going. They're going to be hanging out in the press room. Sure. Maybe bump into them. Hey Philip, come to the meetup. What's up, buddy? Yeah, yeah, Mister Bloom. That's awesome. Come over to the Bourbon meetup. We know you like bourbon. <laughs> yeah, that's great, man. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I couldn't be more excited. This has been um, a great journey we've been on, my friend. And yeah. The fact that we are covering NAB, we're being invited to all these press parties. And we are news media. We are now a part yeah. of the machine. <laughs> <laughs> 
Fart of the machine. Yep. For better or worse. A cog in the wheel. Or something. Yeah. So those of you who are watching this, God almighty, God help you. The fact it's that the GoPro crazy. battery is still going is amazing to me. Yeah, we were kind of worried that it wouldn't make it. Yeah, it's gone. Like, it's gone heavy right now for a good is it still 49 good? I minutes. Mean, is it? Yeah, it's going. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going. Not- Oh, it's flashing. It's everywhere. Yeah, it's getting it. So Dude, it's we're getting rounding ready to up. Go. So we better round this up. The camera's about to go down. Wrap it up. It's Wrap been it a great up. show. Yeah. Um it has. Follow us on at FDB Podcast on Instagram, Twitter. This comes out tomorrow. Yep. Which is Friday. And you're gonna get two days later, we yep. land in Las Vegas. And you're gonna get a show on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But besides that, Sunday night. Keep up with us, Twitter, Instagram. We're going to be sending out pics from the Showstoppers party. You're really pushing the battery limit here. Pushing the battery limit. We gotta, we're going to keep going. we no. got to cheers. That's the final we thing we got to do. But either way, just keep up with us on social media because you'll get all the newest stuff Absolutely. right away. And so. tonight, today, the next time you're deciding which bottle of bourbon am I going to taste this time, yep. you better believe it's this Buffalo Trace. Just in case you can't see it. Yeah, bring it in there. Buffalo Trace. Thanks so much, guys, at Buffalo Trace. We really appreciate it. It's a tasty, tasty bourbon. We wish we were more knowledgeable, but we're not. We are just two guys. You know what we are? What? We're filmmakers. Drinking drinking bourbon. bourbon. Cheers. Cheers. This podcast was recorded live at Sound Images Studio. Find out more at soundimages.com.